This is Rucking Frequently Asked Questions. One of my most watched videos is Rucking 101. I'll put a link to it up here so you can go see that first if you're interested in rucking. But then after you watch that video, come back to this one. And these are the 20, I almost said 40, although there's a lot. I have 20 questions that I narrowed down that I just seem to answer a lot when it comes to rucking. So let's just knock it out here. Watch this video, get answers to the 20 most frequently asked questions about rucking. Let's go. And this question really kind of gets you right in the mood. What is rucking? What do you need to get started? Well, you need a ruck backpack, any backpack will do, and some weight, a book, a phone book, a bottle of water, some canned goods, some dog food, a brick, several bricks, a sandbag, you name it, just some weight in your backpack and hit the open road. So what gear do you start? the ruck and some weight. Now the backpack that you use, your rucksack, really can be anything. It can be an old backpack that you had in the attic, a storage unit in your closet. You can borrow it from a friend, go to Walmart, some other discount retailer, and just get a backpack. Go to the thrift store, find something that just has two shoulder straps and a way to carry something in the back. It doesn't need to be fancy. You don't need to go out and buy a go ruck rucker or a weight plate from them. You can just get any sort of weight. A uh, big bottle of water, a gallon of water, whatever it is, start small, start slow. That was from the Rucking, the first video, Rucking 101. But anyway, just get something. That's it. That's it. Question number one. What do I need? A rucksack and some weight. That's it. And then go for a walk. Rucking on a budget. No, you don't need a fancy backpack like I've already said. You just need something. Any backpack will do. Go to the... A local thrift shop is really the best answer, but I'm betting most people in their family or a neighbor, neighborhood, have some sort of backpack with them. And so that's usually my best advice. Don't go out and buy the Go Ruck Rucker or some other fancy backpack to carry the weight until this is something you decide it's what you want to do long term after you've built up some habit patterns. So maybe after 30 days and you have the funds to get yourself a better rucksack, something that can secure the weight plate a little better, would I recommend doing that? Right off the bat, just get something cheap and easy, something that you have for free already in your backyard that you can use. Same thing with weight. Don't go out there and buy the steel weight plate or some bricks and tape them together like we did in the old days. Just get something that you have in your house to use for the weight. Anything will work and it doesn't need to be a lot of weight. It can be nice and easy. People are always asking about go rock alternatives and there's several out there. And the answer is that if you were gonna get a steel weight plate, if that was gonna be your weight of choice, then really any backpack with a laptop compartment and I've used Mystery Ranch and Evergoods, you name it, I've used them all for rucking just because they had the ability to carry a laptop. If they carry a laptop, they can carry a steel weight plate. So the steel weight plate works with any backpack that you could find anywhere. It doesn't need to be go ruck. So really the alternatives are endless. Watch some of the videos on my channel. I review pretty much every backpack that you could possibly use for rucking. Size of the rucksack. This one comes up all the time. And it is the reason I created an entire video that outlines all of the go ruck sizes, 20 to 25 liters is in there. I talk about GR1s, both the 21 and 26 liter, but here's the th thing. It's the same size as the 20 and 25 liter. So look at those pictures in the video that I'll post a link to up here if you want to go back and look at that one. But that is basically the size that you need, um, mostly determined by the height of your torso. For instance, my torso is 20.5 inches in those videos and photos i show you what those bags look like on me for me at 20.5 the 20 liter rucker is the perfect size for me so that might be the same size for you this is a bullet ruck don't get excited it's not a rucker but either way go watch that video bottom line is it's about your torso height and it's about getting that lumbar pad of the rucker in the small of your back and so that's what we usually what determines which one, not really the capacity, it's more about the height of the bag. That's sizes. All right, question number five comes up a lot. And so it's on the frequently asked questions list. Here we are. But question number five is, what's the difference between a backpack and a vest? And the answer is the vest is usually balanced between the front and the back. 
versus the backpack which has it on your back and is there really any difference there really isn't a ton of difference you're adding weight you're increasing your fat burn and you're increasing the resistance on your legs as you walk so really most of the benefit is happening regardless of what you're using however if you're rucking the rucking is a little different it does work your shoulders it does work your posture a little differently because it is uh, the weight is all on your back so that's really the biggest difference it's different it uses different muscle groups it but really if you have a vest use a vest and use it until you no longer want to use the vest and upgrade to a backpack either way the bag works the back the vest is more balanced but really it doesn't matter use what you got here's a good one isn't this just hiking sort of hiking is in fact putting a backpack on going out in the wilderness and it is really what you probably ruck for is to get out and hike more so yes it is just like hiking except that rucking is typically for a fitness goal so it's more like running I would say rucking is uh, something you're gonna do with a defined distance a defined pace with defined weight and you're going to track that, increase it over time, and just improve yourself with a physical activity. Hiking can be done the same thing. We're really kind of mincing words here, but at the end of the day, rucking is more about the physical activity that you're doing with some weight on your back. Rucking. All right, here's a good one. $300 for a backpack? Are you kidding me? Uh, well, here's the deal. As I've already indicated with some of my frequently asked questions, you don't need to spend that kind of money for a backpack that you're gonna use for rucking and sweat up and get dirty. So don't do it until it's something you really are for sure gonna continue. So, Cause it is an investment. However, I would also say that if you're gonna buy one thing, then buy the rucker because it's backed by SCARS warranty, which just means the GORUCK SCARS guarantee is definitely worth it because as you use and abuse this backpack with all the weight that you're gonna put in it, throwing it around, doing all sorts of things, if something happens, you can ship it back to SCARS and they'll repair it and give it back to you. So at the end of the day, you're gonna, yes, you're spending a little bit more money up front, but you're gonna have lifetime repairs on the piece of equipment that you're gonna sweat up, get dirty, drag around, do some crazy things with. So to me, it's totally worth the investment long-term to get the rucker. Plus the ruck plate pocket in that thing will hold all the plates, big to small, work yourself up, and you just, it definitely secures that. And it, there's some padding in there from the plate from hitting your head. So a ton of goodness in the rucker, and I'm, this is not a rucker review or endorsement. However, if you're gonna do it, that's what I highly recommend, the rucker from GoRuck. All right, here's a good one. How many days a week should I ruck? The answer is somewhere between one and seven. Why do I say it that way? Because your body is gonna react differently to this new activity and you need to listen to your body as you do the activity. So what works for one person might not work for the other. For me, typically, I try to work out five days a week, giving myself two rest days, Monday and Friday or Saturday and Sunday, depending on what I'm doing. Either way, listen to your body, don't overdo it. Definitely dial it back a couple of notches in weight and distance. If you're starting to experience some discomfort, you're gonna experience discomfort, but if it's starting to turn into an injury, that's where you need to stop and rest it, whatever it happens to be. I get this one a lot too, posture. How should my posture be as I ruck? Should it be more forward or more back? And I can tell you that your body's gonna naturally calibrate to that center of gravity point, depending on what you have on your back. So. As you ruck more, your body's gonna become more efficient. It should open up your shoulders and you should be more balanced, not forward more or back. I can also say that as you, as you get into more rucking, if you're developing some back pain, stop, lower the weight, maybe talk to a doctor, talk to somebody that's actually a professional for medical reasons, not an airline pilot. I am very experienced, but again, I'm not professional when it comes to body mechanics. Another good one when it comes to upgrading, what should you upgrade first? Well, I'm a firm believer in everything that has sort of road contact being one of the most important things. And after road contact, I would come up with body contact. So focus on your shoes, get some comfortable shoes, things that you can go the distance in where it's not gonna develop any hot spots. You can go in any sort of weather, whether it's wet or rainy outside, off-roading, on-roading, 
dial in your feet, figure out your socks, and then your backpack should be the next thing because it's contacting your body. And that's where I would upgrade. The weight would be the last thing because you can use anything in your backpack for weight, but whatever is contacting your back, all the newest rucksacks have a 210 back, which is really good. It doesn't develop, I don't at least develop hot spots on my back. They say you can wear it shirtless, not my preferred mode, but you can do it. And that's what I would do. So first focus on your feet, shoes, socks, and then think about the rucksack. Lastly, the weight. All right, what about speed, distance, weight? How should you advance everything? All right, back to my comment about plans. Have a plan, start slow, start lightweight. And as you listen to your body and increase things, you're gonna kind of bounce back and forth. So first off, I would go unweighted and I would just focus on distance, increasing the distance slowly over time one time around the block, two times, three times, now a mile, mile and a half, two miles. Once you get it above a mile, then you can start adding a little bit of weight. And I wouldn't add a lot, I would add five pounds at a time. And then as I increased my distance, just listen to your body. I would, you're gonna be very surprised when you get up to about 10, 15, 20 pounds, and you're gonna do three miles with 20 pounds, how your body starts to react, how your hips are gonna act, it's just gonna start to, you're start to gonna feel it. Max weight, typically in training, if you're less than 150 pounds, 20 pounds. If you're more than 150 pounds, then a 30 pound plate is what you would use in a go ruck event. So that's typically what I would use day to day, putting in miles, 20 or 30 pounds. That's the goal. Now, if, when you're getting serious about training, you might increase your weight for short distances. You might say, for instance, do 30 pounds for a mile. Then you might get a sandbag, 40, 60 pounds, do a quarter mile, do a hundred yards, drop it, come back, do something else, and then pick it up again. You might go back and forth with that weight, but baseline weight, 30 pound plate, plus the water and everything else. So it's gonna be a little more than 30 pounds, but that's what I would do. So mostly focus on the distances and then slowly increase the weight. Distance first over weight. Now pace, pace is gonna be something that's gonna be unique to you. How tall are you? How fit are you? And really, what is your goal? You're, really, the speed is not as important as the distance. So, but as you want to increase speed, just like a sprinter, you're going to do something called intervals. And then for that, I would just do, say, uh, one, out of one mile, maybe a quarter mile. And there is going to be at a, a faster pace. You have to train your legs and your body to operate at a faster pace. So don't out overdo it short distances at a faster pace you're training your body to operate at that faster pace not just going out there faster all the time i guarantee you as you get into this more and your body becomes more efficient moving the weight that you're going to find a increasing speed is not going to be that difficult it's just going to happen naturally as you find your natural gait if you want to go really fast that's a whole other discussion and again it's going to come down to interval training at its core. This is a great one and it comes up occasionally. People talk about after maybe 40 minutes, their hands turning to jelly and they can't feel their fingers low, uh, maybe they're cold. But the real the issue is, as you're walking at your hands or your side, doing multiple things, the blood is either pooling and starting to make them swell or your circulation is just poor. But most of the time people get sort of a full feeling in their hands. Maybe for me, my hands would actually swell occasionally. And so what I do for that is just keep my hands on my shoulder straps a little bit more. They actually sell a couple of different products. Goodworks makes some little straps that go up here. There's ruck straps, uh, or you can go to Home Depot, put a link to the description to these, these little clips that clip onto your, the webbing and you just make provide a handhold. But either way, if you elevate your hands closer to your heart, you will find that they're not gonna throb, they're not gonna be full or uh, just a painful feeling in your hands. So just elevate your hands occasionally, that'll alleviate that from feeling like jelly, getting full, just swollen, that kind of thing. Just you gotta find some clips on your shoulder straps. I've been asked before about hydration powders, electrolyte mixes, that kind of thing. Do I use them? The answer is yes. Do I have any recommendation? Not really. There's a ton out there. I would just try something before you go out, get far away from home and make sure that your gastrointestinal system agrees with whatever you're going to use. I've used Element, I've used Gatorade ones before, 
what else? Uh, noon energy, any of these are gonna work. They're gonna be fantastic. You can try them all out. Just whatever you do, like I said, try them out before you get too far away from home. Somebody asked me about the difference, and this has come up a couple of times, the difference between just rucking for fitness or for a challenge, what's the difference? The difference is if you're just gonna go out rucking and using rucking for fitness, you're gonna be focused on the weight, you're gonna fix, focus on the distance, the speed, and that's pretty much it, right? Mostly legs, core, everything else, holding the ruck, going the distance. And there's really no replacement for actually putting in the miles if you're doing say a star course or some other distance event. Now, if you're doing a challenge, totally different ball game, totally different scenario. You're gonna to need to do a lot more than just ruck. You're gonna need total upper body workouts to develop your arms, your shoulders, be able to carry heavy things on your shoulders. So a lot of sandbag work, definitely a lot of sandbag work, a lot of core strength to make sure you can not only ruck, but you can carry things and do other things during a challenge, during a go ruck challenge specifically, so you can succeed. So again, it's a lot more than rucking if you're doing a challenge, but if you're just doing a rucking event, mostly just hit the miles. Sort of just like electrolytes, how about nutrition? I normally bring snacks. I'll bring goos and some energy gels and that kind of thing on shorter events. But if you're doing something longer, like for instance, I did a 50 mile ruck, those energy short supplement things are just not gonna work for the long term. You're gonna need some real food. So we at about halfway, a little over halfway during that 50 mile ruck, we actually had sandwiches. So definitely something with more carbs. Again, it's more specific to you. I can't really tell you what you're gonna eat, but I would bring real food for the longer distance events, peanut butter and jelly, crustables, just something with some protein and some carbs to make the whole thing go a lot better. Don't rely on those quick energy solutions because you, your body will burn them up and you'll be in a hurt locker before you know it. This is a great one and it comes up a lot. And the question is running shoe or some sort of hiking boot. Now my, my stance on hiking boots and boots in general is if you need the ankle support and you want some more aggressive traction, then you might consider a boot. But boots are generally heavier, although they are making some really comfortable and very lightweight boots from GORUCK. Maybe you want to check them out, did a video on the high speeds, but either way, I have gravitated to running shoes lately and I have either a pair of trail running shoes or road running shoes, depending on what sort of terrain I'm going to be on. And they've done great. I've done 50 miles in boots and it just was terrible. And mostly the way my foot fit in those boots, not such the boot makers themselves, but either way, most of the time now you'll see me in running shoes and the running shoe doesn't matter whatever you have used in the past and want to try will be perfect i've used brooks i've used the go ruck running shoes in fact i have those on right now but either way try some running shoes they'll be awesome that's what i would use and if you're going to be off road maybe try out some trail shoes just that something to be a little more durable waterproof that kind of thing this question probably should have been the first one. I'm not sure why I didn't put it on there. So the question was, so I just get a backpack and go for a walk, that's it? Yes, <laughs> that's actually it. That's all you have to do. It's that simple. And the funny thing is that when people do this, they actually put some weight on, go out there, put a few miles on, they all come back and say, that was a little bit harder than I thought. I'm gonna, I might be a little sore after that activity? The answer is yes, you'll be sore and that's fine. That means you're doing it right. But yes, it's just that simple. All right, this one comes up a lot too. People always ask me about the Amazon weight plates. Are they any good? So here's the deal. I'll put links to three different weight plates in the description for you to go check out. Ones that are comparable to the GORUCK ones. Yes, they're a lot cheaper. I can't speak to the quality of the actual weight plate that after you get it. But here's one thing you want to pay attention to. The exact dimensions of the plates that are given are more like the tall ruck plates, not the short squatty ones that fit in the ruckers. So just be careful about that. They may not fit exactly like you want to, so just pay attention to the dimensions. But all the three that I found, and they are significantly cheaper than the go ruck ones, they fit like the tall weight plates. So they'll fit in most laptop compartments. They're not gonna fit in the ruck plate pockets on the rucker, at least from what I can tell wrapping things up only two to go and here's one how do you stay visible on the road 
Good question. And honestly, reflective bands on your backpack or rucksack, the newer ruckers have an elastic or a visible strip that are reflective, so you shouldn't have a problem, but that's what I would do. Put something reflective on the back of your backpack. That'll help you out a ton. You can also get some lights at REI or online at Amazon that you can clip to the backpack that will just light up like a tail light so people don't run into you on the open road. Also carry a flashlight at night, wear light clothes, reflective things in the front. You get the nine yards. It's just like running, but now you have a backpack, someplace to stick all your things on there. So stay visible, wear light clothes, reflective things, and be seen. And the last one, I kind of saved the best for last. Should you use a hip belt? The answer is no. And from the hardcore backpackers, you might say, why am I gonna do that? Well, I've used the hip belt every time I go backpacking. The answer is it's just different. If you're using a backpack, you are going to, with a hip belt, and you're putting all that weight on your hips, it's gonna work different muscle groups. Now, when I climbed Mount Rainier and I used, uh, I used my specific backpack, I did use the hip belt to transfer the weight from my shoulders to my hips, just so that I could mimic the actions that I would be taking when I was on my backpack adventure. When I'm out rucking, I don't typically use the hip belt. The reason I do that is because I'm trying to work my shoulder strength, work on my core, bring my shoulders more open and work on my posture by leaning back a little bit more and using the weight to kind of strengthen everything. So that's why I don't use the hip belt. I do have a hip belt on my rucker. It is designed for if I'm doing an activity that would be put me more in a plank position, bear crawls, doing a plank, push-ups, that kind of thing, mountain climbers, so that that ruck plate doesn't come up and slam and hit me in the back of the head. So that's why I use a hip belt on my rucker. I have on the 50 mile ruck that I did, I did use it as an alternative position. So you would rest the pack on the hip belt sometimes just to give it, uh, get it off my shoulders and you know, just find a different position because I was out there for 20 hours. I wanted different positions without uh, fatiguing any one muscle group at a given time. So there you go. Hip belt sometimes, but not for what you think. Unless you're training for a backpacking adventure, then don't use a rucker. Use the backpack you're gonna use on that backpack expedition so that you can train like you're gonna fight or backpack. So there you go. Those are my rucking frequently asked questions. The ones that people most often ask me on my YouTube channel and my Rucking 101 video. So there you are, my answers to some of those questions. If you wanna to add to the discussion, please leave a comment down below, ask more questions. That is by far my favorite part of this YouTube experience is I get to interact with people and help more people just find a backpack and get outside. I'm here to answer your questions. Hit me up on social media or in the comments down below. Love to further the conversation. With that, we're gonna enjoy this beautiful day in downtown Tampa, put in some more miles, See you in the next video, like, subscribe, do all the rest of the things so you can see what's gonna happen next. See you.